The Vanguard Group is like a car that you can drive across the country. It's not the flashiest one on the road, but it still looks good and is the most reliable one out there. But there are a few things that you need to know about the Vanguard ETF and index fund investments that not a lot of people are aware of that will probably change how you view the company. In this video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes to look under the hood of what's really going on with Vanguard. To understand why Vanguard is the way they are, I first need to introduce you to the man who founded the company, John Bogle, also sometimes referred to as Jack Bogle. He founded Vanguard. Vanguard in 1975 and his top priority from the very beginning was to put the investor first. Jack had been a part of the professional investing business for many years, so he saw firsthand how much these money managers were ripping off the average person like you and me. To set some of this up and to put it into perspective a little bit, when Jack passed away in 2019, it was reported that his net worth was around $80 million with half of it going to charity. I know that's a lot of money because it is, but if you take into account the fact that Vanguard's assets under management at that time was around five trillion dollars with a t his net worth should have actually been in the billions of dollars but there's an interesting reason he wasn't that rich which we'll cover in just a minute so hang tight to get an idea of why vanguard is so unique we have to go all the way back to 1972 when the first index fund was created but it wasn't actually created by Vanguard. In 1975, Jack Bogle launched the first Vanguard S&P 500 index fund, and even though he didn't come up with the idea of index funds in general, he made them one of the most popular investments that we all know today. It's obvious how successful they've become now, but back then, index funds were a very, very unpopular idea. People laughed at him because who in the world would want to accept average stock market returns every single year? Professional stockbrokers and individuals were only interested in beating the stock market. Duh. But that's kind of like today, so I guess nothing has really changed. To beat the market, you and your professional advisor need to be buying and selling stocks on your own because, you know, big egos. Now, Vanguard does offer actively managed funds today, but that's mainly because they want to give their investors options if that's the way that they choose to invest. So even though the company was built on index funds, they still offer those actively managed funds as well. If you're enjoying this video so far, then help support my dog Molly by hitting that thumbs up button. I'll tell you what, for every thumbs up that I get within the first month of this video being released, I'll take her on a one mile hike by the end of the year. So 1,000 likes equals 1,000 miles. I might be regretting that commitment, but oh well, let's give it a try. Remember how I said that Jack gave up billions of dollars in net worth? The main reason for that is because he has never been the sole owner of Vanguard. You know, I'm doing fine, but I don't own Vanguard. I've never owned a share of Vanguard. And, but I've been paid a nice salary and a well, decent salary and nice bonus when I was running the place. So uh, I'm not complaining, but I just don't have and never will have the kind of wealth that most people in this business have gotten because they charge their investors too much for what they're worth. Usually when someone starts a business, they own all or at least the majority of the company. Since that person is taking most of the risk, they're usually and rightfully rewarded if it succeeds. But from the very beginning, Jack set up Vanguard to be owned by the actual investors, meaning that when you own any shares of a Vanguard fund, you are considered an owner and shareholder of the Vanguard group. Now here's your fund. It's run by Vanguard, and you own Vanguard. And Vanguard also runs a whole bunch of other funds, and we allocate the cost among those funds. There are now probably 165 of them. So the costs are allocated, depending on the fund's own cost, depending on competition, depending on fairness things like that. If you want to know where incentives lie within the financial industry, then all you have to do is follow the money and find out who actually owns the company. For Vanguard, we are the owners of the company, so the incentives are aligned with our best interest in mind. And that's because Jack thought that that was just the right thing to do. On the other hand, Fidelity, for example, is a private company owned by the founders, families, employees, and ex-employees. Incentives are aligned with those three groups of people and not someone who uses their funds. Charles Schwab is a publicly traded company, so the incentives lie with individuals who own that stock. BlackRock, who offers the popular iShare ETFs, is a publicly traded company, so their shareholders are their top priority and not you. State Street, who offers the most popular SPY ETF, is a publicly traded company, so if you own their investment funds, then sorry, 
they're not looking out for you. And if you want to know what highway robbery really looks like, then go check out the investments that companies like T. Rowe Price, Edward Jones, and other investment firms like that are pushing to their investors. And it's gone. What's up, gone? The money in your account. It didn't do too well. It's gone. The good news is that with Vanguard ETFs, you're able to invest in them on any of the investment platforms out there. So even if you prefer the Fidelity, Charles Schwab, or TD Ameritrade platforms, you still have access to those Vanguard investments, which means that you can be an owner. For me, I love Vanguard investments, but I'm not a huge fan of the Vanguard investing platform. I personally prefer M1 Finance because it's a lot more user friendly. I'll have a link to check them out down in the description where you can also get a free $30 for signing up. Jack said, my ideas are simple. In investing, you get what you don't pay for. Since Vanguard investors own the actual company, the benefits of that ownership comes in the form of some of the lowest fees in the industry. Other mutual fund companies are trying to turn a profit so that the owners can benefit. Vanguard is taking that would-be profit and returning it to their shareholders in the form of lower fees. Vanguard has 130 mutual funds and 76 ETFs with an average expense ratio of 0.09%, while the industry has an average expense ratio of 0.54%. That's a cost of 90 cents versus $5.40 per $1,000 invested. I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. If you like to pay six times more for something, then I just drew a picture of this elephant that I'm willing to sell you. And to top it off, I'll even turn it into an NFT that you can eventually take in the metaverse if you like. I know it looks like a dog, but there's proof on the blockchain that it's an elephant. I swear. Not only are Vanguard expenses very low today, they recently came out and said how they plan to cut costs on their investment funds by $1 billion over the next four years. It's a race to the bottom, and Vanguard is able to be at the forefront since their main goal is to return value back to you as their shareholder. ETFs are my personal preferred investment vehicle right now, but Vanguard was late to the party with offering their first one. It wasn't because they were sitting on their thumbs waiting around though. They held off on purpose. State Street launched the first ETF, SPY, which tracks the S&P 500 in 1993. This head start is one of the big reasons that they currently have the largest assets under management of $449 billion, while Vanguard's total stock market ETF is sitting in third at $296 billion in assets under management. Vanguard launched its first exchange-traded fund in 2001 eight years after the first ETF started trading. The main reason for holding off on this investment vehicle is because they were looked at as a way to trade for the short term. With ETFs, you can buy and sell them at any point in time when the stock market is open, just like you can in an individual stock. On the surface, this might not seem like a big deal, but it is when you realize that so many investors are more likely to panic sell when stocks are down in the short term. On the other hand, with index funds, what Vanguard is known for, trading is actually done at the end of each day. If you place a trade for an index fund in the middle of the day, then the shares won't actually be bought or sold until the market has closed that day. As time went on and Vanguard realized their investors wanted access to this type of investment, they started creating ones that mirrored their index funds. This is why they offer something like the Total Stock Market Index Fund VTSAX and the ETF version of the total market index fund, which is VTI. To be honest with you, it's a really good thing that they eventually got into the ETF space when they did because money flowing into ETFs has been off the charts over the past few years. ETFs at Vanguard accounted for only 24% of their total assets in 2021, but in that same year, 92% of their net flows went into ETFs. I'm going to make a prediction here. Eventually, the ETF business at Vanguard is going to be equal to or bigger than their mutual fund business. Business. ETFs are just becoming too popular, so wait for it. Vanguard was hesitant to add ETFs early on because the company's values stem from their founder, Jack Bogle. He's a firm believer in buying and holding your investments to avoid the short-term turmoil that we all see in the stock market on a day-to-day -day basis. In John's eyes, true wealth is better created over the long term as opposed to a fly-by-night strategy that most people are hoping for. We've all heard the stories about people who win the lottery then eventually go broke. Those people never worked for it and didn't learn how to slowly manage larger and larger amounts of money over time. There's a ton of lessons to be learned along the way of the wealth building journey that get easily overlooked. It's not something that can necessarily be taught, it has to actually be experienced. Check out this video to your left on my top five Vanguard ETFs to buy and hold forever. Make sure to tap that thumbs up button and get access to the private financial independence community down in the description below to meet up with and learn from a group of like-minded people on the path to financial independence. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Done.